This video is brought to you by Tactile Turn. They make fully machined pins right here in the US out of materials like bronze, copper, titanium, and zirconium. Tactile Turn is known for their fantastic bolt action pins, but they just launched a brand new side click pin that also comes in three size variants, the 5.8 inch standard, 5.3 inch short, and the 4.6 inch mini. And unlike the bolt action pins, the side click comes with a really nice milled titanium clip. You can also upgrade your pin with a Timascus clip or personalize it with laser engraving on the standard clip. To see more about what Tactile Turn has to offer, hit the link in the description below. And if you purchase anything using those links, it will help support the show. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best MEDC. And earlier this week, over on Instagram, I asked you guys to ask me some questions and I would answer them. But before we get started, I just wanted to tell you about these really quickly. These are the custom big idea design TPT slides with my logo and a Tapo design. We've been working on these for a while. I'm so, so excited that they're finally here. They're gonna drop next week. I'll tell you more about it over on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, just go to Best Damn EDC over there and follow, and you'll find out more about drops like this and other stuff I have going on that I don't always talk about here on the channel. I wanna to try to do something a little bit different this time. I pre-selected the questions. There were a ton of questions. So if I didn't get to yours, you can try asking it again in the comments down below and I'll try my best to get to it. Uh, there, there were just so, so many. And and rather than rambling for an hour and a half and cutting a video down to like 20 minutes, uh, I figured I would pre-select some and see if that goes a little more smoothly. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. Okay, let's answer some questions. I went through, I think I selected 20 out of there had to be hundreds, maybe thousands of, probably thousands of questions. It just keeps going. I scroll and scroll and scroll and there's just, there's just always more. So I picked some of my favorite questions, some that have to do with content I have coming up, some with things that are totally unrelated to EDC. And the very first one comes from mb.wild, who was actually, I think, featured in the last episode of The Best in EDC. He says, what is the biggest mistake people make in the EDC world as they figure out their kit? Really great question. I could answer this over an hour. Honestly, I could make an entire podcast episode about this, but the the easy answer is that people getting caught up in specs and high-end materials, blade steels, titanium, copper, brass, all these things that you start adding these things up and things, the price starts inching up and getting more and more expensive. I think it was probably about a year ago I told myself I would never buy a Sabenza. I would never spend $500 on a knife and now I have a Shure Gorov and I've had several Sabenzas and I've got hinderers out the ears. I've got a lot of very expensive knives and it's a slippery slope. Once you rip that Band-Aid off the first time and, and buy your first $500 knife, the second time is much much easier and uh yeah that's that's probably one of the the worst things that you can do getting into edc enjoy that budget gear enjoy the stuff that you're getting into it with so my key situation right now is actually all budget stuff i've gone around the whole entire edc realm looking for the best key solution and this is this is it for me because i don't carry them much anymore. So I have a key bar junior. I think that's 20, $25. I have a Griffin adventure tool and then a, an Olight I1R2 EOS. That's my key situation. And it's all pretty budget friendly gear. So I have very expensive key organizers and very expensive gear all around. And sometimes the budget gear is the best. So don't get caught up in the price and the materials go for what works. Look into things that should work better for you versus what looks cool, sounds cool, and is more expensive. The next Next one comes from Raven the Pirate. He said Vero Synapse or the Impulse. So you guys know I did a video on Vero recently. I covered the Synapse, Impulse, and the Fulcrum. Uh, I actually sold my Impulse because I liked the Synapse so much and I had pre-ordered one and it came but mine actually ended up being a special edition. This is the bacon edition. So it has a bacon Damascus blade, which is just so, so beautiful. This one also has end cut carbon fiber scales. It's a special edition, only 10 were made. And uh, if you wanna know more about how to get one of these, go follow Vero Engineering over on Instagram. Um, I ordered a basic one, just a green, OD green micarta scales and Joseph told me that mine was gonna take a little longer and it would be worth it and this is what came instead. So really, really neat. But if I had to choose between the Synapse or the Impulse, I'd choose the Synapse every single time. It's just a better knife for my hand. I enjoy it a little more. Next question, most used thing in your pockets aside from phone, wallet, and keys. So I don't use my keys a whole lot. I don't use my wallet a whole lot because my 
phone is basically my wallet now. I, I pay with Apple Pay as much as I possibly can, uh, but that has to go to the flashlight. So this is the flashlight that's in my pocket most days, I'd say. This is the Okluma DC Zero in titanium. Uh, really, really awesome flashlight. I've also been carrying this flashlight some, which is the Prometheus Beta QRV2 in titanium. Both fantastic flashlights for what they are. Uh, but I, I end up using a flashlight more than anything. Another question that was asked was, why do you carry a flashlight? Doesn't everybody have a smartphone now? And yes, everybody does, most everybody. Uh, but these flashlights, a dedicated flashlight, is so much more useful than a phone flashlight. Like, how many times do I need to hold the flashlight with my mouth when I'm looking at something and using both my hands? Almost always. Have you ever been able to do that? Like, how do you do that with a phone flashlight? You. You have a shirt pocket? Who has shirt pockets? I don't have a shirt pocket. I can't do that. You can prop it up sometimes. It's just so much nicer to have a flashlight that you can just pop in your mouth and hold while you're doing something or just something dedicated that is just much better at, at shining a light. So a phone light is more of a spill light. It's totally spill. This dedicated beam of light is just so much more useful in so many situations and I end up using a flashlight a couple times a day. What's a knife mod you've always wanted to try but haven't done yet? Uh, there are three actually. Uh, reprofile, I'd like to take like a Tonto to a drop point just to kind of, you know, cut my teeth there and, and learn how to do that. Uh, I would also like to regrind a knife just to just to try it as well. Something I wouldn't care messing up just to see and experiment. And then the other would be one that isn't as hard to mess up, but a copper wash on a knife. I think that'd be fun to do. I don't think it's very difficult, but you know, I just haven't ever done it. Here's one from Ben underscore C Bell. He said, any plans to get into the podcast game? So something you may not know about me is I've been on many, many podcasts over the years. In fact, uh, I think the first year I was on a tech podcast, we won Stitcher's award for best tech podcast. That was uh, so much fun. My buddy, Michael Fisher, who's still on YouTube as the Mr. Mobile, uh, it, we, we were on there every single week. We just ragged on each other. We had a great time and I, I've always missed it. I had my own podcast for a long time called Untethered. And then now, uh, actually this week we were supposed to start Whiskey Knife Fight. That is a podcast that I'm starting with Jeremy Sires and, uh, this, this whole pandemic has really screwed up everything. We were actually supposed to start it last week after I got back from vacation and my mic interface, my XLR interface Totally busted, doesn't work anymore. So I had to buy another one. I had to wait on that one to come in. Uh, it came in this week and then we had a few things happen behind the scenes. But long story short, this Friday, we're gonna do a test run over on the Whiskey Knife Fight YouTube channel. So we're not doing the podcast just yet, but we're just gonna hop on there, have some drinks and just talk and have a little fun, answer your questions, just hang out. And it's gonna be like a dry run for the podcast. That's at whiskeyknifefight.com. That'll take you to the YouTube channel, uh, which is also just youtube.com forward slash whiskey knife fight. But yeah, I am getting into the podcast game with my buddy, Jeremy. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. This one comes from Ryan C. King. Have you ever purchased a piece of gear and regretted it immediately or shortly thereafter? No, I wouldn't say that I've ever regretted buying anything. I've not liked some stuff that I've bought, but it's very easy to flip gear, not flip for profit. But if you buy something you don't necessarily like, it's easy to just offload that in the EDC world, whether it's on uh, EDC Exchange or Knife Swap on Reddit or in the classifieds in my Discord server. It's easy to just get rid of something if you didn't like it. It doesn't have to be your jam. Doesn't mean it's a bad piece of gear. You can just you know get rid of it. And there's also return policies for a reason. Um, they don't always apply, especially to like sprint runs of things. But no, I've never really regretted it. I've more regretted things that I've sold. In fact, a couple months ago when I bought this Damasco, I was actually selling a bunch of gear specifically to fund this Damasco watch. And in the process, I sold my Marathon TSAR. And as soon as I boxed it up, it hit me. I was like, Dang, I really shouldn't have sold the marathon. So I watched and waited and watched and waited. I was looking at Watch Recon every single day waiting on a marathon to pop up and I missed a few good deals. And then uh, I just checked eBay one day and I found a really good deal on a brand new marathon TSAR on a bracelet. 
and I bought it. So I've definitely regretted selling things. I've not really ever regretted buying anything. Derek underscore does says, what is your long-term goal with your social media endeavor? That's another really great question. When it started, it was really mainly just a way for me to be independent and make my own money, not have to answer to anybody and just be my own boss. I've really never liked working for other people. It's nothing against anybody. I, most of my bosses have always been awesome. I've just always wanted to do it myself. I've, I'm just hell bent on it. And if say in a few years, this doesn't work out for me, I'm probably going to try something else on my own. It's just something I've always wanted to do. I can't explain it further than that. I just want to work for myself. It's the best, most free thing ever. And after doing this for so long, I could not imagine going back. So for the, for the now, I think the whole reason is to provide for my family, provide a really nice and fun life for Eleanor, my future kids and myself and Alex. Uh, but I think long term, I think the, the, the goal is to teach more people about everyday carry, but to teach people in general, I think about things they don't necessarily know and to entertain people. But I think one of my favorite things since starting this channel and, and making content online, which I've been doing for a decade, is the friendships and the connections that I've made in doing so. Uh, met some of the most amazing people, some really great friends, and to continue doing that and meeting new and cool people is, is definitely a big perk. This question comes from Pan Kiki. He says, uh, what was the reason you got into EDC? And the reason I picked this is because I never really got into EDC. I've always been into it. I've always loved knives and gear and little trinkets all sorts of things. I mean, I've been carrying Leatherman for a long time. I've My first knife I got when I think I was six years old. I've always loved flashlights. Like, I've always loved this gear. I just didn't have something to call it. It was just the stuff I had. And I think most of you can probably relate with that. But now, like, now that I know it's a thing, uh, I think what really drew me in was finding the community on Instagram. More specifically, John Smith or 875FPS. Brassworks, whatever you want to call him, he's the guy that really sucked me in because I saw the stuff that he was carrying and I'm like, what is all of that? I don't know what any of that is other than your Swiss Army knife, which is also custom. Like when I saw one of his photos, I'm like, what is this? This is amazing. And that is just kind of how it snowballed because before people were sending me their EDC photos and it was, you know, a Kershaw knife and a wallet and a flashlight. And I'm like, ah, cool. But then when I saw John's stuff, that was just what turned the tables and just blew the doors off. And uh, it's been downhill ever since. What folder is in your pocket right now? Well, I think I actually have two in my pocket. In the back pocket, I have the banter. I was taking photos earlier and this one was just in my back pocket. Um, I haven't really started carrying it a ton, but I've, I've been flicking it a lot and using it to cut, mostly food prep. And then in my other pocket, the one that I actually picked up to carry today is the Gareth Bull Sham Weary. So it's a Shamwari, but it's made by Wee, so that's what people are calling it, is the Sham Weary. Very, very different knives, and Ben, who designed the banter, hates front flippers. So, um, I, I don't know, I just felt like that was a little ironic, that I'm carrying a front flipper along with the banter, because this is like the bane of Ben's existence, and this is Ben's brainchild. This is what he came up with and designed, so, I don't know. Just kind of thought that was funny. And they're both manufactured by Wii. Ooh, Grimsmo Official said, uh, when are you coming by the shop? Well, as soon as this pandemic's over and I can leave the country without fear of not being able to come back, especially now that travel bans for Americans are uh, being put into effect. Like, I don't think there's one with Canada yet, but I'd rather just wait it out. I'm so pumped to come see you guys and see the shop. I want to be there. I want to see the, the shop in person and, and hang out with you guys. I haven't seen you guys since last year's Blade Show, so not soon enough. That's my answer. What's the next big project you're excited for? Another great question. So when I uploaded the videos last week, I did a pair of videos. One was my truck EDC and then the other one was more of a walk around and plans explanation for what I'm doing with my new truck. Uh, as soon as I uploaded those, I got a few comments from people telling me to stick to EDC and stop jumping around because you're always jumping around and changing and pivoting and uh, just stuff in that vein. And honestly, that pisses me off. It's so frustrating because here's the thing. 
I've never been a person with one hobby. I've always loved a bunch of different things. Gear, coffee, camera equipment. I, there's just so much stuff. Gaming, PCs, tech. Like, there's so many people out there with all of those same hobbies. But I've been pigeonholed into this EDC hole. Like, I love EDC gear. I do. But I've been doing nothing but EDC for two years straight. Every day I wake up and I think about EDC and I work on EDC and then I go, go to bed and dream about EDC and I'm not burned out. I'm just bored. I want to do something else. I love camping and I've not been in two years, over two years. It was one of my favorite things to do in the world and then I just stopped cold turkey. I've not been fishing in forever. Well, I did when I was at the beach, but I've not been fishing regularly. I've not done any of these other things and people have just driven me into this corner and anytime I try to step outside of that and do something different everybody's like get back into your box you're out of your box get back in it and I absolutely hate that and the one thing that is going to make the content here on the best MEDC suffer is me not being able to explore and have different hobbies and just get a little taste of something different do something fun that's not sitting at this table that's what that other channel is about just a little bit of deviation from EDC, some, some fun, some just something a little different. And of course, I'm feeling the effects of that more so now because of the pandemic and really <laughs> coming here and going home and that's about it. But I really just have so many other things that I want to explore and I'm going to do that without affecting anything here. Everything you see here is going to stay exactly the same. I'm just doing other stuff on the side. That's all that other channel is. That's why I have a second channel. It's Taylor Martin. You can find it pretty easily. It's linked down below. It's on my other channel page. Like it's everywhere. Just search Taylor Martin on YouTube. Anyway, what's my next big project that I'm excited about? That whole channel. <laughs> That's it. Why GMC over Toyota? Well, one, the Toyota is a little small. We have a growing family and it's just a little cramped. Car seats never really fit in the Tacoma very well. And while I could have gotten a Tundra, uh, the GMC just offered more features and more of what I was looking for. The Tundra, while it's reliable, the fuel economy is horrible. And once this pandemic lifts, I plan on doing a lot of road trips. So that fuel economy in that GMC, that diesel engine, is really, really great. I mean, I'm pushing like 30 miles per gallon on the highway, which is so, so good. Obviously, once I build the truck up a little bit, that's going to be lower but it would also be lower on a gas engine that's already only starting at like 12 or 14 miles per gallon. So having that extra fuel economy is crucial on a truck that I'm going to put a lot of highway miles on. So um, that was the biggest thing. I, I like the way it looks too. The Real Project K asks, will you be buying the half slanted hybrid pocket dickies Jeremy brags about? Um, no, because I have style. For those of you who don't know, I made a video basically complaining about slanted pocket shorts. It was my five ways my summer carry changes. Uh, and then Jeremy made a video on his updated summer EDC this week. Basically, he called me out for hating slanted pocket shorts and then talked about his solution to it, which is not a solution at all. The Dickies pocket shorts, not my thing. I don't like them. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your wish list of watches? Really, really easy. There's a laundry list of watches I'd love to own. The Laurier Gemini in black gilt. I also want another Young Hands, which I had to return mine. Long story short there, I'm still very upset about it, but uh, Young Hands Max Bill Chronoscope and of course an Oris Divers 65 in Bico, which I told Jeremy about. I told him I really wanted one and then he went and bought it before I had the opportunity to buy it and that's why he's a jerk. That's why Jeremy is a jerk. And of course, long-term goal is uh, an Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch. Of course, you guys know that. Kind of touched on this one a little earlier, but not entirely. Why are you changing your branding from your current to your personal name? So I announced that I was changing the channel name here to Taylor Martin, and I've actually gone back on that. I thought about this for literally a year. I, I've been really trying to do this the right way, and I finally decided that rather than mess with what's already working, I'm going to leave this channel the way it is and just relaunch a second channel. A lot of people have been asking me, why am I going with a second channel? I mean, nobody really seems happy with any of the decision I make. But the point is, this channel is working. I don't really want to mess with that at all. So everything else is just going to go over onto the second channel. I already have a second channel that's got almost 100,000 subscribers. So I might as well use it and just diversify. I don't want to go into the full explanation here. I don't think this is the right place for it, but maybe we could do a podcast episode about it because Jeremy and I both have two channels 
and we both have a little bit of different reasoning for why we're doing that. Everlasting Ember says, as a content creator, where do you turn for inspiration when you're feeling uninspired? Basically, when I'm feeling uninspired, I know that the content I create is not gonna be good, which is sometimes why I, you don't see a video on here, but like once a week sometimes, sometimes that's two, sometimes three in a week. But the reason it slows down sometimes is I'm just not feeling inspired. And when I'm not feeling inspired, you're gonna be able to tell that in the video that I make. It just, it just feels slapped together and blah. And when that happens, I just switch from creator to consumer and I just go to YouTube and Netflix and I just consume as much media as I can. I read and, and I just try to get out of this creator mode for as long as I can and just consume. And usually when I make that switch, by the time I'm done binging whatever I've binged, I feel so motivated to get back into it. But during this entire pandemic, I've struggled with inspiration. I've just been blah this whole time. And, I, and I've gone through stages where I just binge, I feel inspired, I come back to make something, I'm like blah again, so I go back to it. And I've been struggling with this for like four or five months and uh, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way the current state of the world is like nobody feels amazing right now. Everything is just so up in the air and uncertain and uh, I'm not feeling uninspired, but I'm just definitely feeling the effects of it and I, I need to get out and, and travel and do things that are not inside this office. I am so fortunate one to have this office. I love having this office, but I am so sick of just sitting here. Thoughts on the Protec Malibu. So I have that in this little knife roll from Arc Company. So Protec sent this to me and uh, I carried this a lot since I got here. I've been switching between three knives really lately. The Quiet Carry Drift, the Sham Weary, and the Protec Malibu. This is easily the most fidgety knife ever made. Button locks are just so fidgety. They're more fidgety than the axis lock. Way more fidgety, even a compression. It's just so, so fidgety and it's such a fun knife to play with, but it's also just a great knife in general. And keeping the knife roll out here, what do you store all of your gear in at home? Well, I keep a lot of my gear here in a Craftsman toolbox, but I also keep this with me, especially on the weekends. When I'm leaving, I like to take a selection of knives with me. So I take this with me. This is a watch roll from Arc Company. But I also have this, which is a Pelican Vault 100 that I got from Drop because it has custom knife foam inserts in it. So you've got some knives here on the top, right here, but you also have more on the bottom. So it will hold 19 knives, which is really, really nice. And you can lock it. You can make this lockable storage and it can go with you. It's much easier to just kind of take this with me if I'm gonna be gone for a long time and I don't want it just sitting here. That was the last question I had pre-selected. Let me rapid fire a couple. Um, are you planning on going to Blade Show this year? Uh, Probably not. I, I don't know for sure. I'm gonna wait until much closer. I mean, we got about a month until it starts, so uh, I got a month to decide, I guess. Ford Raptor, greatest truck or greatest truck? I think the Ford Raptor is a fantastic truck. I almost bought one, almost, but I decided to go with the GMC instead because I really wanted a diesel engine. <laughs> Can you post more frequently? Well, I certainly try, but I can't make any promises. Favorite whiskey slash scotch? My personal favorite is always gonna be Lagavulin 16. I absolutely love it and I cannot ever have enough of it. Uh, what is the number one IPA you would recommend to someone? Well, if you're trying to find something that's distributed and in stores and easy to find, Probably one of my favorites, especially for summer, is Tropical Torpedo by Sierra Nevada. Uh, Hazy Little Thing is not too bad, but the my favorite IPA that I've tried is either a local one from High Branch. They have a, a rolling selection of IPAs that I love every single one of them. But Treehouse Julius is way, 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 way up there. And I had a subscriber send some to me. Thank you so, so much. Uh, they're so good. So, so good. What's one piece of gear, not a knife, that you could not ever go without sunglasses? One more, malt vinegar on fries. Hell yes, every time, all day, malt vinegar on fries is the best. It's the best. It's one of the reasons I like going to Five Guys is because they have malt vinegar on hand and most places don't. So yes, malt vinegar on fries.
Absolutely. That's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos. If you wanna support what I'm doing here, some of the things I talked about in this video will be linked down below as well as some of my favorite gear and my current carry. You can also buy directly from me at carrycommission.com. There's also that drop of the custom TPT slides that's coming out very soon. Go follow on Instagram to know when that happens. And also you can go to patreon.com forward slash best MEDC to support there. Uh, be sure to follow us on the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Best MEDC. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And there's also a Facebook group and a Discord server. They're both linked down below. You can click that link and request to join there. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.